Hello friends, welcome back to another important lecture. Now friends, in this lecture, we are going to understand the important topic of net present value that is NPV in short. But before we start, don't forget to like this video since this tells me that you are loving the content. And this helps me in making more such awesome lectures. Also subscribe to this channel since this is the only channel that provides quality content. You can also join my telegram and facebook groups where I post lots of one pagers and other important stuff with respect to your examination. Now all the links are there in description to this video so do join after you finish this lecture. So friends just assume you want to start a taxi business alongside your banking job. So you buy two cars and start giving it for rent. Now in this you will have cash outflows in form of purchasing cost and then you will also have cash inflows in form of income over the period of time. Also if you want to close the business at the end of 5 years then you can also sell the cars as well. So there will be a scrap value as well. Now the biggest question in front of you will be to start the business or not. Now friends the answer lies in the concept of net present value or NPV. NPV is in fact the most important and extremely powerful concept of finance. But in order to understand the concept of NPV, we need to master the concept of time value of money. And since all of you are GIB qualified, so I am pretty sure that you must be aware of what time value of money is. Now in short, if I explain you in layman language, then just see the price of your favorite snack samosa. I remember in my childhood I used to get it for around rupees too. But now over the years the price has increased and these days we generally get it for around rupees 10. So as you can see that samosa is same, its size is same, but its price has changed. And this variation is nothing but time value of money. As you can see over the years the value of money changes. The same thing that is costing around rupees 2 many years ago. But now its cost has increased to rupees 10. Now friends in time value of money there are two parts. One is future value of money and then other one is present value of money. So let's first see what is future value of money. Now friends say if today you invest rupees 1 lakh and rate of return is 10% then can you tell what will be its value one year from now? Well I hope you can easily answer this question. Value after 1 year will be 1 lakh plus 10% of rupees 1 lakh, isn't it? Or we can also say it as 1 lakh multiplied by 1 plus 10% that is rupees 1 lakh 10,000. Next can you find the value of same investment that is rupees 1 lakh after 2 years? Well yes it will be simply 1 lakh multiplied by 1 plus 10% raised to the power 2 and that will be 1 lakh 21,000. Friends like this you can find the future value of our investment of rupees 1 lakh after 3, 4 and any number of years. So now you understand the future value let's move on to the concept of present value. Friends present value is total opposite of future value. So in this case what we are trying to figure out is how much should we invest today in order to get rupees 1 lakh 10,000 one year from now assuming that rate of return is 10%. Now I hope you are getting what I am trying to say. Now all of you can directly answer this question since we already did it few seconds ago. That is we need to invest rupees 1 lakh. But how we get that? Now the formula is simply that is you divide the amount that we are getting after 1 year that is 1 lakh 10,000 by 1 plus 10%. And in this way we get the amount that we need to invest today. So the amount will be simply 1 lakh 10,000 divided by 1.10 equals rupees 1 lakh. Similarly what will be investment amount if you need to get rupees 1 lakh 21,000 after 2 years assuming 10% rate of return. Friends here also we proceed the same way that is rupees 1 lakh 21,000 divided by 1 plus 10% raised to the power 2 which equals rupees 1 lakh. Friends with this I hope you got the difference between future value and present value formula. In future value we are multiplying the initial investment by 1 plus rate of return while in present value we are just doing the opposite that is we are dividing the future amount by 1 plus rate of return. So this is how future value and present values are calculated. Next one you will also hear a term called discounting in your questions. So discounting is basically converting the future value into present value. 
Let's take the same example that we did earlier. That is, if we are going to receive one lakh ten thousand a year later, and we want to know what is the value of this one lakh ten thousand in today's terms, then this is nothing but discounting. We are actually converting future value into present value, and this ten percent here is nothing but a discount rate. In short, the relation between present value and future value is future value equals present value multiplied by one plus r raised to the power n. Where R is interest rate and N is number of years. Now, friends, before moving ahead with the lecture, don't forget to get your GIB and CIB resources from the links given in description to this video. All these are power-packed books which are updated regularly, and these will be your best companions in your task of clearing GIB and CIB in very first attempt. All the links are there in description to this video, so don't miss out on these after you finish this lecture. Now, friends, if you understood the concept of future value and present value, then now you can very easily understand the concept of net present value. Friends, net present value, or NPV in short, is the value of all future cash flows, that is, inflows and outflows over the entire life of an investment, discounted to the present. Now, friends, the best way to find net present value is by using this tabular format. Now, please note this first column will be here. Then we have cash flows. After this, we have the column of present value factor, and finally we have the column of present value of all these cash flows using present value formula, which we learned earlier in the lecture. Now please note, initially we start with zero. Now this is basically the first day of the project, and this is when you make your initial investment, and in cash flow column it's shown as negative, since it's a cash outflow that is you're spending the money. So friends, please remember this very important point. And then we have year one, two, three, and so on. If these years have positive cash flow, then show it as positive. And if these cash flows are negative, then show as negative. But please note, you will generally get positive cash flows in your examination. And finally, you add all these present values to get the net present value. So, friends, I hope the format is clear to you. Now, if you want steps, then in stepwise manner, we can summarize the steps of NPV as. That is, in first step, determine the net cash inflow in each year of the investment. Then, second step would be select the desired rate of return or discounting rate or weighted average cost of capital. Then, next, find the discount factor for each year based on the desired rate of return. That is, discount factor is basically one divided by one plus r raised to the power n. The next step will be determining the present values of the cash flows. By multiplying them with the respective discount factors or present value factors of respective periods, and finally we arrive at net present values by adding all the present values. Next, friends, let's do a simple example to understand the concept better. Now, compute the NPV for a project with a net investment of rupees one lakh twenty thousand, and net cash flows for the three years are rupees eighty thousand, rupees seventy thousand, rupees seventy thousand, twenty thousand, respectively. Further, the company's cost of capital is ten percent, and friends, we are also given the present value factors at the rate of ten percent for three years as zero point nine zero nine, zero point eight two six, and zero point seven five one. Now, friends, let's solve the question in tabular form, which will help you in better understanding. So, as you can see, initially we had an investment of rupees one lakh twenty thousand, so that will be shown in year zero, but it will be negative since it's a cash outflow. Then for year one we have net cash flows of rupees eighty thousand. Then for year two it's seventy thousand, and finally for year three it's twenty thousand. Now friends, we just need to find the present values of all these cash flows. So can you tell me what will be present value of this initial investment of rupees one lakh twenty thousand? Well, please note this value we are putting today itself. So its present value will be one lakh twenty thousand only. And you can also check this by formula as well. That is present value equals future value multiplied by one divided by one plus r raised to the power n. Now here since n equals zero, so present value is nothing but one lakh twenty thousand only. Next, can you tell me the present value for year one cash flow? Well, it will be simply eighty thousand multiplied by one divided by one plus ten percent raised to the power one, which will be eighty thousand multiplied by zero point nine zero nine, which is seventy two thousand seven twenty. Now, friends, please note in question we are already given the present value factors that is here. That is, we are already given the value of this one divided by one plus ten percent raised to the power one as zero point nine zero nine here. 
so no need to use the formula as we did here we can directly multiply the cash flows by present value factors and and then get the present values but friends generally in examination these are not given hence i have explained the calculation of present values using formula also similarly just try to find the present values for year 2 and year 3 now for year 2 using formula present value will be rupees 70000 multiplied by 1 divided by 1 plus 10% raised to the power 2 which will be 70000 multiplied by 0.826 equals 57820 similarly for year 3 present value will be 20000 multiplied by 0.751 equals 15020 friends i hope the present value calculation is clear to you the present value for year 0 will be negative since it's a cash outflow in form of investment while for year 1 2 and 3 will be positive since these are cash inflows that is we are getting income here and lastly to find the net present values simply add all these present values and we get -1,20,000 plus 72,720 plus 57,820 plus 15,020 equals rupees 25,560 friends i hope the example is clear to you Now after this comes the most important part that how we make decisions using NPV. So friends please remember these important decision rules that is if NPV is greater than 0 then accept the project and if NPV is less than 0 then reject the project. And secondly in case of multiple project we may choose the project having the highest NPVs. Now please remember both these since lots of questions are asked year on year on both these rules. So for the example that we did earlier since the project has positive npv of rupees 25560 this project can be accepted Now friends this is all about the concept of npv Next let's do some questions and case scenarios to master the concept and see how the questions will appear in your examination And the first case scenario is an analyst has gathered the following data about a company with a 12% cost of capital Now friends this data is given to you that is there are two projects project P and project Q then cost of project P is rupees 15000 crores then cost for project Q is 25000 crores then life is 5 years for both the projects and cash inflows for project P is 5000 crores per year and project Q is 7500 crores per year Now if projects P and Q are mutually exclusive what should the company do and these options are given to you Now friends I hope you all remember that NPV calculation table. So let's find the NPV for each of the projects P and then Q. So NPV for project P will be now this 15000 crore which is initial investment will be shown as negative cash flow in year 0. And since it's year 0 so present value will be simply negative of 15000 crores only. Then for year 1 cash flow is 5000 crores and present value factor will be 1 divided by 1 plus 12% that is 0.893. So present value will be simply rupees five thousand crores multiplied by zero point eight nine three equals four four six five crores. Similarly, we found other present value factors, and using this, we got these present values. Now, net present value for project P will be simply sum of this column. That is negative of fifteen thousand plus four four six five plus three nine eight five plus three five six zero plus three one seven five plus two eight three five equals rupees three zero two zero crores. Similarly NPV for project Q will be calculated like this and net present value will be simply 2030 crores Now friends in this question you must be thinking what is this mutually exclusive projects Now please don't get confused with this term So please note mutually exclusive projects is a term which is generally used in capital budgeting process where the company chooses a single project on the basis of certain parameters out of the set of the projects where acceptance of one project will lead to rejection of other projects so in short this simply means that you have to select any one project out of the two so for mutually exclusive projects accept the project with highest positive npv now in the question npv for project p is 3020 crores which is higher than npv for project q that is 2030 crores Therefore we will accept project P and reject Q. Thus the correct option for the given question is option C. So friends I hope the case scenario is clear to you. Friends finally let's see a final case scenario before winding up this lecture. 
Answer next three questions based on data given for projects X and Y assuming discount rate at 10%. Now friends, in this first table, we are given initial investment for both the projects. That is for X, we have 50,000 and for Y, we have rupees 80,000. Then estimated life for both the projects are five years. And then at last, scrap value for the projects is also given. That is for X, it's rupees 12,000 and for Y, it's rupees 20,000. And then in this next table, we are given cash inflows. That is for project X, we are given these cash flows. And then for project Y, we are given these cash inflows. Now, the first question is, what is net present value for project X? And these options are given to you. Now, friends, you already understood how to find net present value. But this question is a bit different. As you can see here, we got scrap value as well. So apart from calculating present value of all these cash inflows, here we have to find present value of scrap value as well. Now, as you can see, initial investment is 50,000 and this is cash outflows. So we will show it as negative here. Also note, this is happening right at the start. So we will place it as year zero. And its present value will be negative of 50,000 only. I hope you understand the logic why. Then at year one, cash flow is rupees 20,000 and present value factor is one divided by one plus 10 percent. That is 0 0.909. So 20,000 multiplied by 0 0.909 equals 18,180. Friends, similarly, please find present value of all these cash flows. And finally, please note, we will sell this scrap at the end of year five. So the present value of the scrap will be with respect to year five only. So present value of the scrap will be 12,000 multiplied by 0 0.621 equals 7452. And lastly, friends, NPV will be sum total of all these present values, which comes out to be rupees 48,647. That's the correct option for the given question is option C. Then next question is, what is net present value for project Y? And these options are given to you. Friends, for this, please pause the video and try the question yourself. Now, as you can see, initial investment is rupees 80,000. And this is outflow, so we will show it as negative. And this also is happening at right at the start. So we will place at year zero. And the present value of this will be negative of 80,000 only, which is shown here. Then at year one, cash flow is rupees 40,000 and present value factor will be one divided by one plus 10 percent equals 0 0.909. So 40,000 multiplied by 0 0.909 equals 36360. Similarly, we find present value of all these cash flows. And finally, present value of scrap will be 20,000 multiplied by 0 0.621 equals 12420. And finally, net present value will be sum total of all these, which comes out to be rupees 19,265. That's the correct option for the given question is option A. Now, friends, finally, we have reached the last question of our case scenario. And the question is, which of the two projects should be accepted? And these options are given to you. Now friends, we have already seen the decision rules earlier. And as you know, we will select the project that has the highest NPV. And as we have calculated in previous parts, NPV for project X is 48,647 and NPV for project Y is 19,265. So we will select project X and thus the correct option for the given question is option A. Now friends, with this I wind up this lecture, I hope the concept of NPV is clear to you. And also the questions and case scenarios are also clear as well. Lastly, don't miss to get your GIB and CIB resources from the links given in description to this lecture. Also, you can mail all your queries to this email ID. So thank you and I will meet you again in another lecture.